Now at 6, the Army announces changes in leadership at Fort Hood and a new investigation into the death of soldier Vanessa Guillen. Plus, the CDC issues a sweeping halt on evictions to combat COVID-19. The NFL takes a stronger stance on fighting racism, how it plans to tackle racial injustice in the end zone. We have heat advisories for our coast, rain to our north. I have your hour by hour forecast. Plus, the flu or COVID-19 will connect the dots on how to decode your child's symptoms as students head back to class. From the KHOU 11 studios, this is H-Town Rush. Tackling racism, you just heard Brandy mention it. The NFL is planning to display social justice statements in the end zone during the upcoming season. So let us know how you feel about their new decision on our social media pages. You can just reach out using the hashtag #HTownRush. And with that, good morning, everyone. I'm Stephanie Simmons. Welcome to H Town Rush. Let's get straight over to meteorologist Cheetah Craft with a look at the forecast. And we want to hear not about the heat, but the <laughs> cool down. <laughs> oh, but you must wait to hear about it and for the cool down. We will talk all about the cold front. Uh, let me show you here. We do have a complex of thunderstorms sitting to our north. Heat advisories draped along the coastline, including near Liberty County. But the first day in six days, Harris County, not under that heat advisory in areas northwest. Throughout the day, it is still going to be hot. It is still going to be humid 98 today heat index up to about 108 but the reason we're not under the heat advisory because that 113 the 114 feels like temperatures have been knocked down okay cool front here you go it's expected to arrive next wednesday i'll talk more about that coming up in about six minutes i'll send it back to you all right cheetah looking forward to it now to our top story this morning a big shakeup at fort hood the commander of the Army Post no longer holds his position following a string of deaths, including specialist Vanessa Guillen and now Sergeant Elder Fernandez. Janelle Fort has that story. Xavier, good morning. The shakeup, it follows a series of tragic events at the base. Sergeant Elder Fernandez is now the 10th soldier at Fort Hood found dead since March. And as a result, there is an in-depth investigation into the climate there. A civilian committee is at the base investigating the culture surrounding the sexual harassment claims these cases have brought to light. Part of the overhaul is current commander Major General Scott Efland being removed from his post. He will be replaced by Major General John B. Richardson IV, and the change takes effect today. A running theme in these recent incidents is the families of these soldiers say they don't buy the Army's story about what happened to their loved one. Here's what Fernandez's family had to say. And in this case, and in so many other cases, we're feeling like these soldiers are being let down. There is now also a probe into Fort Hood's chain of command surrounding the death of Army Specialist Vanessa Kean and how they handled that investigation. Back to you. Janelle Fort, thank you for that update. And we'll continue to follow this major story in Fort Hood. You can also read about Sergeant Elder Fernandez and Soldier Vanessa Guillen's case on our website, khou.com. We turn now to your coronavirus headlines. Here's what we're tracking for you this morning. The U.S. reported more than 43,000 new COVID-19 cases, bringing the total to just over 6 million. The death toll in the U.S. is now approaching 185,000. The National Institute of Health says that convalescent plasma should not be considered standard care for COVID-19. That announcement comes after the FDA approved emergency use authorization for the treatment. The NIH says that the FDA based that authorization on preliminary studies and that more research needs to be done. Also, today is the last day for landlords and tenants to apply for rental assistance in Houston and Harris County. $60 million is up for grabs. Head to KTRU.com for a list of criteria. Now some good news for renters. The CDC is halting evictions for some people to slow the spread of COVID-19. But renters protected by those executive order, by that executive order, must meet four criteria. And here they are now. The income caps are $198,000 for couples filing jointly or $99,000 for singles. They must prove they've sought government assistance to pay rent, declare they're unable to pay rent because of COVID-19 hardships, and affirm they're likely to become homeless if they're evicted. Now, it would be up to local courts to decide if a renter meets these criteria. And even if they do, this is just a temporary moratorium. Now, the tenant would eventually have to pay back their rent. The orders will last through December 31st. 
All right, Xavier, we turn now to the day's other big stories, starting with Governor Abbott hinting at starting to reopen Texas again. The governor says he hopes to give an update on those next steps sometime next week. In a tweet, the governor said COVID-19 hospitalization numbers are declining. COVID cases cropping up as students return to schools. From Conroe to Clear Creek ISDs, districts are reporting COVID cases among students and staff members. Those two districts began phased in on-campus learning just this week. But having cases arise is something districts say they planned on and have enhanced cleaning and other protocols in place to ensure campuses are as safe as possible. So what happens if your kids are exposed to COVID-19 in the classroom? Harris County Public Health officials tell us they offer free testing for kids 13 and up at all of their testing sites. The mobile locations are the only ones that can take kids under the age of 13, but they only offer the nasal swab test. The Harris County clerk changes the mail-in ballot application plan. Chris Hollins agreed to hold off on additional application mailers until a court rules on a challenge to the plan. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton sued on Monday, saying Hollins' plan to send applications to all voters, quote, will create confusion and facilitate fraud. And you can see more money in your paychecks thanks to a new tax deferral program. If your employer opts into the program and you qualify for the next four months, your employer will no longer hold back the 6.2% of your paycheck that normally goes to Social Security. But it has to be paid back, so workers may see smaller paychecks early next year as companies withhold more to pay the IRS back. And those are the big stories on this Wednesday morning. An interesting discussion on social media over this next story. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell says phrases end racism and it takes all of us are going to appear in the end zones this year. It's part of the league's social justice awareness initiatives and the NFL is also going to allow similar visuals on helmets and caps. So players we've learned will also have the right to boycott in week one. They'll have a choice to sit out or protest. The executive vice president of football operations also says he's heard from a lot of players that they want the league to be more involved and more active in police reform. So I grabbed some reaction just from one post because I feel like it really highlighted the spectrum of response to this. So we saw folks who say, I don't watch sports for politics or social messaging. Other folks who just don't think this is going far enough saying very sarcastically, Thank you for changing the world one letter at a time. But others think, hey, at least they're putting an effort in. You can let us know what you think on social media. Just be sure to use the hashtag #HTownRush. In separate news, the league is finally finalizing a policy for crowd noise to be pumped into empty stadiums during the games. Right now, only five teams plan to have fans in the stadiums during week one. So uh, the NFL commissioner says he thinks it's possible that will change over the course of the season. But in the meantime, they're going to pump that sound in and he doesn't think there's going to be any kind of competitive advantage for the folks who have real fans in there screaming versus the ones who just have that crowd noise pumped in stuff. Yeah, I mean, maybe the players need it to get pumped up on the field if they don't have the live fans. All right, Brandy, thank you. Heading back to school means more germs in the classroom, and it may be hard to tell if your child has COVID-19 or just the common cold. Janelle Bluda connects the dots. As any parent can tell you, the return of school means the return of runny noses and surprise fevers. But how can you tell if it's a normal childhood illness or coronavirus? Let's connect the dots. While some kids are starting out in virtual school, that won't last forever. And the cold and flu season is just around the corner. First things first, according to pediatricians, it will be hard this year to tell the difference between coronavirus and some run-of-the-mill childhood illnesses. That's because, according to the CDC, the most common symptoms for kids are cough and or fever. So what are doctors telling parents? Something you've probably heard before. You know your child better than anyone. If your child always has allergies in the fall, then it makes sense they will get a runny nose this fall. But if you see something unusual, a high fever, unusual stomach trouble, even a rash, call your doctor for advice. When should your child stay home? 
Most schools require any child with a fever to stay home. In most years, kids would return to school even if they still had a runny nose, as long as that fever went away. This year is not most years. Infectious disease experts are telling parents this is not the time to send sick kids back to school, even if their symptoms are mild. More tough advice for working parents during an already difficult year. Connecting the dots, I'm Janelle Bluda for H-Town Rush. Janelle, thank you. Remember, you can text the word fax to 713-526-1111, and we will send you a link with the latest on COVID-19. Let's go over to Cheetah now for a look at the one thing. All right, the one thing you need to know, hey, next week, cooler, cooler temperatures in the forecast for the mid and latter part of next week. Not today, still feels like temperatures up to 108. I'll have your seven day forecast in about six minutes. Cheetah, thank you. 609 Uber cracks down on riders to prevent the spread of coronavirus. The new rule that's set to roll out soon. Scam alert. Conroe police want you to know that someone is making phone calls pretending to be them. And as we wait for the real fall to arrive, some stores are already bringing back pumpkin spice lattes and sweet treats earlier than ever. Brandy has the sweet details next. Houston's Beat the Heat program is offering free portable AC units for seniors, disabled, and low-income residents. I'm Tiffany Craig. If you live in Houston, here's your number, 832-393-4301 or dial 311 to see if you qualify. If you live in Harris County Precinct 2, here's your number, 713-274-2222. You could also be eligible for a free AC unit.